What's going on guys? Welcome back. So in the previous video, I tore this engine apart. It was a pain. I had never done it before. It was frustrating, but it happened. Everything came off neat, clean, and orderly uh, with nothing getting broken in the process. So in this video, we're going to start cleaning everything up. Now, I did take the liberty of working on some things off camera, just testing out some different products to see what works best. And as you see, I have a whole box of stuff here that I've already cleaned up. These specifically, I'm going to go ahead and drop a random clip from the last video showing these two pieces right here. As you can see, before, uh, they were disgusting. And now, as you see, they cleaned up incredibly well. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and knock out the rest of the stuff that I have on the table, the small things, before I get into the big things. Small things consisting of the pistons, arms, the remainder of these lock caps for the camshafts, um, the girdle cover, the strainer, the actual girdle itself, some of the uh, sensors, VTEC solenoid, um, thermostat housing, and the bolts uh, that I labeled and bagged up in the previous video. I got those already laid out in different containers, and I'm going to clean these up too. I'm going to be using a combination of things to get this done. I have some new brushes, some brush attachments for the drill, I have brass brushes, some toothbrushes, I have some new cleaning cloths, and uh, Super Clean is on the way. Um, to test that against some other products, I've got some Zep engine degreaser, some Gunk engine degreaser, and I have a little bit of Purple Power left mixed with water. Um, on the table over here, I got a bucket of Purple Power mixed with uh, 50% of water just to dilute it a little bit so it doesn't damage anything but it does clean things. So this is going inside all these and everything else on the table over here is going to get cleaned with the stuff on the cart. So I'm going to set it up and we're going to get started. Alright, so after letting the bolts sit, scrubbing them down with a brass brush to get all of the old um, silicone and RTV off, they look really good. They're all bagged up, relabeled. All of the caps are clean and looking awesome, along with the cover and the filter strainer. So far, so good. Everything's coming together. So I'm going to go ahead and hop back into it and keep going. So as you can see, the uh, girdle and the girdle brackets cleaned up really, really good. Top and bottom looks awesome. So we are moving right along. Overall, this took me about 20, 25 minutes in total to get this entire thing clean from top to bottom. So not too bad. So 
this huge batch of parts are done. Now an issue I did encounter while degreasing was the paint was coming off of a good portion of these pre-painted items. So I went ahead and hit them with a environmentally friendly citrus based uh, paint stripper in an aerosol can. After three coats wiping down in between each coat you see the pieces came out to where they are now. I did all that off camera though because it was a tedious thing and I really just didn't feel like trying to record because that paint stripper is uh, really bad for their skin and I didn't want to touch the camera while trying to deal with it. Um, in a later video there's going to be more pieces here, but in a later video I'm going to be painting a lot of this stuff in the Pour 15 black system and the bolt heads and other random bracketry is going to get painted in rust bullets uh, rust preventative system in the metallic gray so the metallic gray contrast on black is going to look really good when it's all done so moving back into getting this video continued um, I'm going to jump into disassembly and cleaning of the intake manifold which as you can see is gross See the uh, intake manifold is completely clean inside and out. All of the tunnels are spotless to include the actual main chamber. Um, upper and lower are all clean, so that's awesome. Um, I have everything I need to put this back together again, but I'm going to do that in a later video. So what's left, i got to hand clean the head, and I have to finish cleaning the transmission and the block. So go ahead and spray it all down with degreaser hit it with a uh, brushing tool, and then pressure wash it off. And hopefully, we'll have a completely clean setup that we can start building from scratch, and it's gonna be awesome. So the simple green did a pretty good job of getting stuff clean. Uh, this side looks really good. But uh, the front and back have a little bit of areas where I'm not really liking it yet. And the inside still has a lot of buildup. So I'm going to switch over to the uh, Zep Citrus Degreaser now. The foaming action, let that soak in. And then hit it with the scrub brush again, and then see what happens. All right, a couple days later, uh, the head is completely disassembled. I did not record this, as there are a lot of awesome videos on YouTube already with the disassembly process, two of which I will link in the description below. If you need to uh, see them at any point, they are really good to follow. I took all the internal components and I laid them out by cylinder, by side. I don't know if they need to go back in that same way or not, so that's why I laid them out. And I will clean them and bag them up, uh, so, and then label them. If I don't need to go through all that and I could just put these back anywhere I want, uh, let me know in the comments because that will save me a good bit of time. But, with that said, uh, I got the valves clean. Now, I initially started with just hand jamming these things with wire brushes and I was getting nowhere. So what I ended up doing, uh, when I don't have the tool for the job, I figure out a way to make one. And as you see here, I have a, uh, I've jerry-rigged my drill into the vise with a clamp on the trigger and brass brush attachments on the drill. So that way I can let the drill do all the work and all I got to do is just move it around. So I'll knock these three final valves out, get those done, and then start cleaning all the internal parts of the head. 
Uh, I, all I have left of the cleaning solutions are super clean and my purple power. Uh, it seems like the the gunk and the uh, zep, it, they work really good, but they you go through them relatively quickly. Uh, you'll see bits and pieces throughout the video that I was using super clean for one part, and then the next part I would use the zep, so on and so forth. And uh, I still have some super clean left. I may have to go buy more after the head, but we'll see. Alright, so all the valves are done. Uh, I did notice, however, when cleaning these valves that there were numbers already etched into the valve. As you can see, there's a 6 on that one. There's a 2 on that one. So somebody had this engine open before and did some work to it. Luckily for me, they numbered the valves so I can put them back in the way they're supposed to be. So that's a plus, I guess. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and move the head out of the way and start cleaning all the internals and get them in their own specific bags and stowed away. So that is done. Uh, the head's completely clean. All the internals are bagged up and prepped for reinstall at a later date. Cylinder 4 intake, cylinder 4 exhaust, so on and so forth. Uh, everything is boxed up and ready to go. Uh, now I know in the last clip you saw me hit this head with the super clean. Uh, that was after already running this head through the gunk degreaser and the zep degreaser. I ran this head through that stuff until the brown fluid stopped coming out of the ports. So I assumed it was as clean as it was going to get. I hit it with the super clean because I had some left over, about a quarter in each container. And you saw what came out of this head even after all those iterations of the other products too. So super clean definitely came in on top in regards to capability for the products that I've tested in this engine tear down and clean up in these last couple of videos. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to put that box over here under the car with all the other components that I've cleaned and get ready for a later date when I start to rebuild this engine. I'm in no rush, I'm in no hurry. So I'm gonna take the block and take the head down to a machine shop, have them go over it, make sure that there's no cracks or anything that I missed and surface both so they mat up nice and even, bring them back and then start rebuilding with the parts that are in those containers up there. So with that said, I'm um, sorry the videos are taking so long to put out. Uh, I have a full-time job and that takes priority with that and family. So in the next video, I'm going to go through, I'm going to hit all this stuff up with the Black 415 and the Bullet Gray and get that stuff hardened up and ready to go for the install as well. So with that said, uh, if you want to see more content, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.